Hey everybody, I'm a minute or two early, but uh, I'll give people a chance to hop on. But uh, <clears throat> first of all, I want to um, say thank you to Royce for allowing me to come onto her page and um, do a fun project with you. I hope you think it's fun. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Sherry. I'm with uh, Butternut Hollow here in um, Iowa. Um, I'm the owner operator and um, I have a shop and I sell online. So, um, but today I'm going to share a fun project by um, using Rice's um, famous uh, decoupage paper. So I'll turn the camera down and we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to crackle and decoupage this glass block but and then um we're gonna fill it full of lights and so i just want to tell you a little bit about uh drilling glass so you can see i have a hole right here and i drilled that now you can buy these glass blocks already pre-drilled i think at hobby lobby michaels or whatever but somebody gave me cases of these glass blocks and i know how to drill glass so um i just drill them myself but the trick to drilling glass, so you know, is if I was going to drill, like say this was a glass bottle, <clears throat> if I was going to drill this, you want to drill glass bottles and uh, like the ball jars and all that, you want to drill them upright. Uh, and then you would drill it in this way. You never lay a glass jar or a bottle down on its side. And the reason I know that is because I, I had an old bar ball jar that I wanted to make a lamp out of and so I contacted a glass maker and I was going to pay him to drill it for me but he told me I had the right uh tools and I forgot to bring up but to drill glass I use a diamond bit <clears throat> and then I kind of hold it like this here's my drill and I have another squirt bottle and I just you just squirt it every so often it keeps it cool removes all those little glass bits and it's fairly easy to draw glass. I mean, to drill through this, it took me, you know, maybe two minutes. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. If you ever want to drill glass, it's really simpler than what people think. So let's get started. This glass block, we are going to crackle it and then we're going to decoupage it. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this. This is just some folk art uh, crackle medium. It's nothing you can get it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or whatever. Um, there's other crackle medium out of the, out there, and my biggest tip for that is, hey Vicky, my biggest tip for the medium is each crackle medium instructions might vary a little bit, so just make sure you you read them. Some they want you to leave tacky before you top coat. Some they want you to let dry completely. So just um, just read the instructions. Now, for crackle medium, the thicker you apply it, the bigger the cracks. So, if you want really wide cracks, apply it thicker. If you want like little tiny cracks, make it thinner. So, I want these cracks to be fairly wide, but I also want some variation. And um, once I lay my crackle medium down, I don't mess with it uh, because it does start to dry pretty quick. And so I usually don't mess with it a whole lot once I get it down. And, you know, the cracks I get are the cracks I get. Um, so we got that on there. And I'll be using my uh, craft dryer through all this because we're going to have to speed up some of these uh processes so you guys are not sitting here watching crackle or paint dry forever so let me get the lid back on my crackle let's see we'll just set them back down there and now i'm going to take my craft dryer and i'm just going to give this a drying and help uh, help speed up the drying so that we can get this top coat on there and with the, any crackle medium that's when the magic happens is when you apply your top coat and uh i love using crackle to age stuff uh 
to give it dimension, to even, you know, create some texture. I absolutely love Crackle Medium. And I have tried several different kinds. And I can't say there's not one I don't like. Um, Pentart has a two-step crackle, which is a little different than this. Um, and that is a good crackle to use on top of your decoupage paper if you want to age it that way. And I'm, I might be doing a, a live to show you how to apply that uh, on top of the decoupage paper, which gives it a whole different look, but still looks really cool. So I'm going to, this is already starting to dry. So we'll just hit it a couple more times. And so that we can get that top coat on there. These glass blocks, I mean, this is going to be one you can use every day, but um, you can, um, I did one at Christmas time. I do them at Christmas time, I should say. They sell very good. Halloween, you can make some really cool ones because, you know, you put those lights in there and it looks really cool. Oh, Shy, I'm sorry to hear that. Um. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, honey. I'd be more than happy to try and troubleshoot, troubleshoot um, while you're having uh, the questions. Are, if you're talking about the crackle medium or are you talking about drilling glass? But either way, if I can help you in any way, please give me a shout. I'll be more than happy to try and help you figure out. Okay, so this feels pretty dry. And now we're going to top coat it, and I'm going to be using uh, farmhouse's, um, the farmhouse paint, and it's an all-in-one paint. And I like this because then I can just decoupage right over that. So we'll just get a little bit on my plate here. I bet I'm going to need a little more because I'm going to. And now when you're painting over crackle, I think the biggest mistake people make is they overwork the paint. Because the paint starts drying pretty quick. And when it does, that's when the magic happens. Hello, Felicia. Thanks for joining. And so I try and lay down my paint like in one swoop. And I don't care that it's like light in that area so much and heavy in others. Um, because to me, that just gives it a looks more random and. But you can see right there, see, that's already starting to crack. And that's when I like when the magic happens with the with the crackle medium. I, I, I just love crackle medium. So I got a booger right there of some sort that I got to get out of there. But we're going to decoupage over this so you won't even see that. But see how that... Crackle is happening. I hope you can see that it's happening immediately. That's pretty cool. I had more than enough paint. And by painting, the reason I'm painting this white is because I want my decoupage paper going to put on top of it to pop. And so I'm kind of hoping I can have the best of both worlds. I'm hoping I can get my cool crackle and make my and have my, my decoupage paper uh, pop too. But I think you can see that. I'll put it up to the camera. Can you see how... Uh, the magic is happening already and it just looks so cool that's what i like about the crackle medium so now i'm going to give this a dry uh yeah hit it with the dryer just to speed up this a little bit so that we can um go ahead and decoupage this And as you can see, the more it's drying, the more it's cracking, which is exactly what I wanted. But this step, I have to make sure is good and dry. 
because I'm going to lay my decoupage paper on top of this. So, in these areas here that aren't showing a lot of crack. It's probably because I had, uh, it was a thin coat of my medium. Hey, Kim, how are you? Loved your project today, by the way, sweetie. Like I said, I just, I got to make sure this coat is good and dry. Hey, Jane, how you doing? Thanks for joining me, honey. There's a little wet yet. Has anybody? Um, hi, Colleen. Has anybody done uh, this crackle before on glass or on anything? Don't you just love the look of it? Hi, Janice or Janice. I hope I said your name right. Thanks for joining. Okay, I think this is dry enough to where we can lay our paper on here. I'm doing a lighted block, Colleen, with crackle underneath it. Okay, so this is fairly dry, and I'll show you. That's that's not a bad, whoops, going the wrong way. That's not a bad crackle, really. I'm hoping it works. So now we're going to decoupage this. And honestly, guys, that was the hardest part I had was to choose what paper to use because Royce's papers are so dang versatile that that's the hardest part is choosing what paper you want on here. Because I think really any of them would work. But I chose this one, and it's the uh, it's a piece of the cherry blossom paper. And I actually, you know, I kind of lay it out like this and decide what layout I want. And I really want this B up here um, to be up there in the corner. So I, this is how I'm going to uh, decoupage this paper on here. And what I do is I'm going to turn it. And I'm using some uh, DIY liquid patina here. And I usually hold my paper where I want it. And that's pretty much where I want it. And then I'm going to fold this back like this. And I like to lay down an anchor row. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. And I try to be pretty generous with the liquid patina. I mean, you don't have to be. You know, you don't want globs and runs, but you do want enough for your paper's going to uh, stick really good. And then I'm just going to smooth this out. And I kind of want it to go up. This block, by the way, has a little divot if you can't see that. And um, I kind of want this to go up over the edge, and then I'm going to sand it off, which is going to make it a little more rustic. Hey, Sonny, thanks for joining me. And I just try and get out most of the wrinkles. The small ones don't, do not bother me because they're going to dry. And the wrinkles don't really bother me a whole lot anyway, guys. But I am really left-handed. So I've got to switch sides here. I can use my right hand for most things, but my left hand feels more natural. 
So we're going to switch it up like this. And again, I'm just laying down my liquid patina. And if you ever crackle anything, the crackle does have to be sealed. So this liquid patina is actually is serving like two purposes. It's sealing my crackle and adhering my decoupage. So um, and I just kind of try and work down and I do work in small sections. I'm upstairs in our house here in my craft room and um, I'm in Iowa, like I said, and it's very, very hot here right now. And it's not as cool up here as it is downstairs, even though we have central air, it's just because it's an old farmhouse. Um, so this was going to dry fast anyway, because it's hot. So I'm just making sure that this is stuck all around that little rim there. And I'm probably going to end up with some wrinkles. And they're not really wrinkles. I think it's more where there's cracks and it's picking up that texture. Thank you, Shy. I, re I really like the DIY products, too. And the liquid patina has been my, my go-to for my decoupaging. There's several mediums out there, and I think they're all good. I think it's what we get used to using, um, and that's what we, what we go with. Let me hang on here, though. I got to get a... I'm going to put my brush in this bag here until because we're going to have to seal this paper but I want to get it dry first so now I'm going to dry my paper and then we're going to sand it I'll sand off these edges and it'll give it a little uh, it kind of looks like you do that wet method the wet method tear on them I didn't want it nice and straight and looking perfect. Oh, this looks feels really smooth. That that's wonderful. And you can see the cracks kinda. I can anyway. I don't know if you guys can where my my crackles coming through. But when you put the lights in there, that's when you can really, uh, you really see that, that crackle technique that looks cool. And so now I'm going to take my little sanding block here. And I just go in one direction and go down. And I'm sure if you guys follow Royce, you have seen her do this. So I apologize that you got to sit through another sanding of paper. Um, but Hey, my sister's on here. Hi, Lauren. How you doing, honey? Thanks for joining me. I suppose I could have tried to cut this, but I love the sandpaper look. I just love the way the whole thing um, looks. And I think it's, I can sand it straighter than I can cut it. I can't cut really straight. So we're almost through this step. This step. And then I'll hold the block up, and I'm hoping you can see that crackle underneath there. Yeah, 
Shy, I would guess this is about a 220. Um, I wouldn't go any lower than a 120. Um, this is a fairly new block, so it's working good. Um, I wouldn't go any lower than a 120 because then I think it takes a lot of elbow grease. I'm sure you can use it. And then anything lower than that, I think you really risk um, tearing your paper. Now, my edges are stuck pretty good, which is why I can go this. Usually, I don't recommend going side to side, but I had gotten a little decoupage medium, and some of the paper stuck where I didn't want it to, so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit with my, with my little sanding block here. Some right in there. I don't know if my thumbnail will get it or not. There we go. Hi, Jesse. That's my beautiful daughter. So now I'm going to let me clean up my table here. But I'm going to hold it up. And can you guys see where some of those cracks come through? Now, just wait till we put the light in there. I think it's gonna look really cool. But before I go any further, cause we're also gonna um, put a saying on here I come up with. So I gotta seal this one last time with this liquid patina. Um, so I'll just go ahead and give it a quick coat. And then we'll dry it real quick. Because we got a few more things I want to do to this block. I always look off to the side to make sure I've got a good coat of sealer on there. And that looks good. I want to seal up my, my medium so it doesn't dry out. And if you notice, some wrinkles come back when I put, when I sealed it. But the nice thing is when I dry it, they'll come right back out again. And so if you've never decoupaged and you end up with these little wrinkles when it's wet at first, do not worry. When they dry, they go away. And then they're going to come back when you seal it. But when it dries, it will go away. And so if you can just be patient you will you will like the finished look because it will be it will be just exactly how you wanted it so i can see the wrinkles disappearing as we dry again which is exactly what i wanted to see You know, I don't know what the pollen count is here, and I've never had allergies, but I've been working outside these last couple weeks, and I swear I am developing allergies that I didn't know. Nothing horrible, just, you know, your eyes watering, you're stuffy, or your nose runs, and it's like, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of a pollen out there that doesn't like me. So there, now this is all dry again. Now hold it up again. What do you guys think so far? I think it's looking pretty cool. And so now what I did is I have a big plotter. And so I cut out a saying that I kind of um, I kind well 
I kind of took bits and pieces of a saying, and it says all cracks let light in. And I thought with the crackle that that was appropriate. Thank you, Jane. And so I just have to cut these to where they'll fit on my paper because I really want them. So I think I'm going to, I got to stand up. I think I'm going to put them just like that. And I'm going to be stenciling with steel graphic from Farmhouse. And I use um, these little makeup sponges. And I just tear them in half. I don't think I even have a whole one. They actually come like this. They come like this size. And then they tear apart. And um, I like the big side for larger stencils. And I use this little side for um, smaller ones. So the first thing I have to do is get my stencil down here. And because I'm going over decoupage paper and fresh decoupage paper at that, I am going to take this stencil, and I don't know if you can see, but I am going to stick it on me like this. I'm going to stick it on my clothes. And I'm going to do that a couple times because I don't want it to be so sticky that it pulls my paper up. But yet I want it sticky enough to where uh, my paint doesn't seep. So, and I'm going to get all of these laid down. wants to peel up. So let's fix that real quick. I'm just going to stick it to my shirt a couple times. And I want to put this one like right there. Hi, Tina. How are you? Tina's the master, uh, the mastermind between these lives, just so you know. And thank you for all your help today, honey. I appreciate it. And again, I'm just sticking this stencil. If you can't see me, I'm just sticking it to my shirt in a couple places and then lightly peeling it up to remove some of the tackiness so that it doesn't harm my paper. Okay. So we got that down. Now we're going to peel off this top layer, this transfer tape. I'm going to lightly peel that up. If you have reusable stencils, um, they work really good for a process like this too. Because they don't have the stickiness as these one and done do. But I don't, I didn't have a reusable stencil I could use because I wanted to put this saying on there. So sometimes the hardest part is getting this transfer tape off of there. Okay, so there, this will be the last. And it says, all cracks let light in. And hopefully I'm straight, right? And so now I am going to, like I said, make sure everything's stuck down at least around my letters good. And then I dab in my paint and I dab off because I would rather do several light coats than a heavy coat. There's less chance of bleeding. And you don't have to worry about any any globs. This paint dries fairly, fairly quick. See that up there is already dry. So I'm going to go ahead. I should only have to put two coats on here. And I went with the steel graphic color 
because I thought it matched my paper and I kind of wanted these words more subtle than bold. And so hopefully, um, hopefully I made a good choice. We'll be, we'll find that out in just a minute. <laughs> you guys are uh, learning right along with me. Okay, now I am going to peel up my, my stencil here. And we'll see what happens. It's not too shabby. And then we'll weed the, the few letters that we got to weed. But see how sticking that to my shirt made it stick good enough to do this? Also did not hurt my paper any, which is um, exactly what I wanted. So now I'm just peeling out the inside of these little letters. And I either use a scalpel or this razor blade. But you just kind of watch where you're at. And that what this is what we got so far. And I'm probably backwards because I don't think I mirrored it. But anyway. And now I want to grunge up. I want to grunge up these edges a little bit because, because I like grunge. And so what I'm going to use is. Some uh, Tim Holtz's uh, walnut stain. And I have this little dauber. And I'm just going to dab it in there on my ink pad. And I'm just going to lightly brush it on these edges like this. And maybe get a little bit in the corners. Just randomly hit it. Now, this is just a light coat of this ink. This ink I have found works better if you don't seal your paper first. But I had to seal my paper in order to put my stencil on there because it, it wasn't a reusable one. Um, but this is such a light coat. I think it will dry just fine. And um, I think we'll be fine. I, you know, I don't think it's going to hurt a thing. But I'm just going to grunge it up a little bit. And the nice thing is, you know, I can smooth it out with my finger because I sealed my paper. Your paper actually helps it be a little more, um, makes it easier to manipulate uh, things you put on top of there too. So, and now I have one more thing I have to do because it's one of my favorite things to do. And I have some of this white paint left on my plate and I am going to water it down. quite a bit and I'm going to splatter because splatter is king in my book and so and there's a couple ways you can splatter I could have put this in a stencil brush and ran my finger like that but I just decided to do it this way. 
And there, oh, look at what I did, you guys. Oh, did you see that? That was a bee or a fly or something just flew right by me. Actually, it's a wasp. Um, we're going to hit this one more time. Dry our splatters. And then we're going to put the lights in here. Oh, we got to put our burlap around this edge too. So I'll get my burlap and we'll get that on there too. So while that's drying, I got to move this out of my way before I have a mess. And I'll be right back. Let me get my burlap. There's our burlap. I think this is not quite dry. Um, Shy, you can. On my Christmas box, I did decoupage both sides. And you know what? I think they're sitting in that corner over there. When I'm done, I will be more than happy to show you. That's why I drilled the hole in the side instead of drilling it like through the back because you can make these two-sided no i've never tried um two-sided with the crackle but i don't know why that would matter in fact i think it would kind of look make it look kind of cool so that's a good question so now i have these lights and this is just a strand of 35 of these mini lights and the way i feed them in here is you just find the end and then when you come to I'll move this up. when you come to where it's like this <clears throat> i just fold it up fold it up there and then it pops right in and so i just I feed them all in. I don't worry about where they're falling right now. You just. And they drop right in the hole. Usually. And even though there's 35, this process, this, this step, I should say, feels like it takes forever. But I'm sure it's not as long as it seems. And I, you, these come, these strands come in white and green and brown. Um. If I'm decorating a Christmas tree, I buy the green strand or the brown. Um, on these blocks, I like the white ones. I just think they um, show up the least inside there. I think a green or a brown strand would be a little too um, bold and make it really easy to see it. Or the white one I don't think is uh, very noticeable at all. So... I'm going to get these in here. Well, thank you, Sonny. And, and did you, did you hear me talking about drilling them out, Sonny? Because if you, if you uh, get a hold of me, I'll, or I can repeat it if you want on drilling glass. It's really much easier than what people think. Um, I just use a diamond bit, it's called. And they, they actually work the best. I've tried several bits. The diamond bit is the best. Um, 
and I've had this bit. I can't tell you. So now I got all the lights in there. And you can see that they're kind of like that. But I just give it a good shake to kind of have them, you know, move them around a little bit. And then we're going to take, yes, tell your hobby to drill it, drill it for you, Sonny, and get a diamond bit. And they come in all different sizes. And they're very, very easy to drill. Just make sure you, like these blocks, you don't have to worry about it. But if you're drilling a jar or a glass, I was saying earlier, you got to drill it upright like this. You can't lay it down. But these blocks, because they're solid, they're very easy to drill. Because I could lay this on its side and go like this so that you can apply somewhat uh, pressure. And these blocks, believe it or not, I thought they'd be so thick that they were kind of going to be a pain to drill. And really, they weren't at all. They were they actually drill easier than a ball jar. So I was I was uh, happy. So I'm going to cut this a little long because I really want this to end up in the middle. I want it to meet in the middle up here. And so. And I don't know if this is hot enough. It appears to be. Then I just take my glue gun. And I do not use my fingers to push that down. And I'm sure you know why. Because I've been burnt. I'm pretty sure I have no fingerprints left. To be honest with you. As many times as my fingertips have been burnt from glue. And I just work my way. down and pulling this burlap ribbon tight because so then you don't have any buckles so And the scissors work great for pushing that down in there and not getting burnt. So we're going to go around. And I'm sure you could probably use something other than hot glue it just works the fastest for something like this for me and then I'm gonna put my cord right there but then I'm gonna I'm gonna cut a, a, a slice where it's like straight across from the hole I'm just gonna open up this material like that and I was a little off do you see that but that's okay because it's gonna work and then you can bring that cord through there you don't really see the side of it anyway not a whole lot You know what I have used, though, you guys, for hot glue before, and it does work, is a thimble. Just put a thimble on your finger. Then you can touch it like that. And it does work. I will say that. So I'm going to lay this in. See? Just got burnt. I'm going to lay this in place like that. And come around the top. Like this. I 
I got off a little bit, but I can fix it. And then I'm going to cut this just like that. And we're going to cover this with um, a bow. It's really a knot. So this is what we got so far. And then I take another piece of burlap and I'm just going to kind of guess. I kind of make my knot roughly. But this, I should say, this burlap has a right and a wrong side. And so when I'm making my knot, when I come in the back there, I don't know if I can show you. I twist it and I make sure that when I pull it through this side, see it's the right side so that I don't have this wire side showing because that's the, that's what I don't want. And then you can kind of twist these the way you want them. And then I'm just going to cut this off so I don't have quite so much. And then I lay this on my block. And trim my edges so they're fairly the same length. And I don't mind if they bend up a little bit. And then I'm going to glue that there. Just like this. <laughs> Sunny. <laughs> Sonny, try your lights before you put them in there. Trust me, you'll be fine, honey. <laughs> you you crack me up. <laughs> and now we get to plug this in and try it. Let me move all my other stuff that I needed out of the way. And I'll turn this around. And then, Shy, I'll go grab that Christmas block so you can see where I decoupaged both sides of it. And it worked. It worked really good. So there is the block. And I'll have to get a good picture of this when it's, you know, not so bright out. But there is my block. What do you guys think? I think they're kind of cute myself. And you can, like I said, it's really hard. Can you see how the light what do I have that I could put behind here to darken this up? I don't know. Let me see here. I don't know. Does that help? Kind of. Thank you, Brenda. That It kind of does. It looks really cool in person, but I'll go grab that other block I made, Shy, and I'll show you how you both sides decoupage. So, Shy, here is, I'll just set this off to the side. Here is a Christmas block that I did. And this one was not decoupaged, or uh, crackled, I should say. It was decoupaged with racist papers. But it was not um, crackled. But it, So, it was just, I did that on one side. And then I did this on the other. Hey, that's a good idea, Colleen. You're brilliant. I'm going to shut my light off. <laughs> Hang on here. See. Okay, so here's this. Now you can't see it at all. Can you? There's, this is the Christmas block that I did without crackle. You know, if I hold. So there's that one. But now let's look at the crackle one. Let me get this one unplugged and out of the way. So here is the crackle one. Can you guys see that without too much? But you can see where, um, thank you, Shy. Thanks, Susan. But you can now see the cracks in this one better. 
I have some outside light still coming in because of the windows in my room. But anyway, that's my project. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I will uh, I appreciate you guys coming and joining me and um, hope you enjoyed this project. It's very easy to do. If you uh, need any of these products, you can reach out to me or if you have a um, races um, paper dealer closer stock is closest to you, um, reach out to them. This paper I used again was the cherry blossom. Thank you, Joe. And um, thanks, Colleen. So, but if not, I'll be more than happy to help you. Um, the crackle medium I do have. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Royce and Tina, for all your help. And um, I hope you have a wonderful night. See you later.